Fellow gardeners, I'm about to share something that completely transformed my pepper harvest and might just revolutionize yours too. After years of experimenting with different fertilizers, growth enhancers, and soil amendments, I stumbled upon a technique so simple yet powerful that it almost seems too good to be true. The secret weapon hiding in your kitchen pantry? Common baker's yeast. What started as a curious experiment has turned my pepper plants into absolute powerhouses, producing bigger, more flavorful fruits with yields that have my neighbors asking what magic I'm working in my garden. The revelation came during a particularly challenging growing season, when my pepper plants were struggling despite my best efforts with traditional fertilizers. While researching organic alternatives, I discovered that yeast isn't just for baking bread or brewing beer. It's a living organism capable of creating a biological feast for plants. Unlike synthetic fertilizers that provide nutrients in predetermined ratios, yeast works as a dynamic living system that continues producing beneficial compounds as it interacts with your soil ecosystem. What makes this approach truly remarkable is how yeast transforms ordinary sugar into a complex array of plant-available nutrients. When you create a yeast solution, you're essentially establishing a miniature fermentation factory that produces B vitamins, amino acids, and natural plant growth hormones called auxins and cytokinins. These compounds don't just feed your plants, they optimize cellular processes, enhance root development, and improve the plant's ability to absorb nutrients from the soil. The science behind yeast feeding is both fascinating and surprisingly straightforward. Active dry yeast contains Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the same beneficial organism used in fermentation processes for thousands of years. When activated with warm water and sugar, these microscopic powerhouses begin converting simple carbohydrates into complex metabolic byproducts that plants recognize and readily absorb. During fermentation, yeast produces carbon dioxide, which can enhance photosynthesis when applied as a foliar spray, and ethanol which breaks down into compounds that stimulate root growth. More importantly, the fermentation process creates bioavailable forms of essential nutrients including phosphorus, potassium, and trace minerals that are often locked away in conventional soils. The yeast also produces natural enzymes that help break down organic matter in the soil, making existing nutrients more accessible to your pepper plants. Perhaps most intriguingly, Yeast fermentation generates natural plant hormones that regulate growth patterns and stress responses. The auxins produced during this process encourage robust root development and improve the plant's ability to transport nutrients from roots to fruits. Meanwhile, cytokinins promote cell division and delay senescence, keeping your pepper plants productive longer into the growing season. This hormonal boost explains why yeast-fed plants often display more vigorous growth, increased flower production, and enhanced fruit development. Creating your yeast solution is refreshingly simple and, honestly, it requires ingredients you likely already have at home. Start with one packet of active dry yeast, which you'll dissolve in one cup of lukewarm water. The water temperature is crucial. Too hot will kill the yeast, while too cold won't activate it properly. Aim for water that feels comfortably warm to your wrist, similar to what you'd use for bread making. Add one tablespoon of sugar to feed the yeast and stir gently until both the yeast and sugar are completely dissolved. Allow this mixture to sit for 10 to 15 minutes until it becomes frothy and aromatic, indicating that fermentation has begun. This activated solution is your base concentrate, which you'll dilute before application. For soil application, mix your yeast concentrate with one gallon of water and apply directly to the root zone of your pepper plants. The key is thorough soil saturation without creating waterlogged conditions. Apply this solution every two weeks during the active growing season, typically from late spring through early fall. For foliar application, further dilute the mixture by adding another gallon of water and spray directly onto leaves during cooler parts of the day to prevent leaf burn. Timing your application strategically maximizes results. Apply yeast solution during early morning or late afternoon when plants can absorb nutrients without the stress of intense sunlight. Avoid application during flowering periods if you're concerned about disrupting pollination, though many gardeners report increased flower set when continuing treatments throughout the season. The transformation in my pepper garden has been nothing short of remarkable. Within three weeks of beginning yeast treatments, previously struggling bell pepper plants showed dramatically improved leaf color and vigor. 
the treated plants developed stronger stems, more extensive root systems, and significantly increased flower production compared to control plants receiving only traditional fertilizer. Fruit development told an even more impressive story. Yeast-fed pepper plants consistently produced larger fruits with thicker walls and more vibrant colors. Sweet pepper varieties developed enhanced sweetness levels, while hot peppers showed increased capsaicin production, resulting in more intense heat levels. The overall yield increase averaged 30 to 40 percent across different pepper varieties, with some plants producing nearly twice as many fruits as their untreated counterparts. Perhaps most surprisingly, the enhanced flavor profiles became immediately apparent during taste tests. Yeast-fed sweet peppers exhibited more complex flavor notes with improved sugar content and reduced bitterness. Hot pepper varieties maintained their characteristic heat while developing deeper, more nuanced flavors that elevated their culinary value. Even the texture improved, with fruits maintaining better crispness and shelf life after harvest. Success with yeast feeding requires attention to several important factors. Overapplication can lead to excessive vegetative growth at the expense of fruit production, so resist the temptation to increase frequency or concentration beyond recommended levels. If your plants show signs of nutrient burn, such as brown leaf tips or yellowing, reduce application strength and frequency. Soil pH affects yeast activity and nutrient availability. Maintain soil pH between 6.0 and 7.0 for optimal results, as extreme pH levels can inhibit both yeast function and nutrient uptake. Regular soil testing helps ensure conditions remain favorable for both your plants and the beneficial microorganisms you're introducing. Weather conditions influence application effectiveness. Avoid treating during periods of extreme heat or drought stress, as plants may be unable to properly utilize the nutrients. Similarly, excessive rainfall immediately after application can wash away the solution before plants absorb its benefits. Plan applications around weather forecasts to maximize nutrient uptake. For gardeners interested in expanding this technique, consider experimenting with different sugar sources to feed your yeast culture. Molasses, honey, or even overripe fruit can provide alternative food sources that may contribute additional trace minerals and beneficial compounds to your solution. The yeast feeding strategy represents more than just another gardening technique. It's a gateway to understanding how biological processes can enhance plant health and productivity. This method works effectively on numerous vegetable and fruit crops beyond peppers, including tomatoes, cucumbers, and even fruit trees, making it a versatile addition to any gardener's toolkit. The beauty of this approach lies in its accessibility and sustainability. Unlike expensive commercial fertilizers or complex hydroponic systems, yeast feeding relies on simple, renewable ingredients that pose no environmental risks. You're working with natural biological processes rather than forcing plant growth through synthetic means, resulting in healthier plants and more nutritious harvests. As you implement this strategy in your own garden, document your results and observations. Every growing environment presents unique challenges and opportunities and your experiences will help refine and perfect the technique for your specific conditions. Consider starting with a small test group of plants to observe results before expanding the treatment to your entire pepper crop. This yeast feeding method has transformed my gardening approach and harvest results in ways I never expected from such a simple technique. The combination of improved plant health, increased yields, and enhanced flavor makes it an invaluable addition to sustainable gardening practices. If this guide has opened your eyes to the incredible potential hiding in your pantry, make sure to subscribe to Smart Garden for more innovative growing techniques and sustainable gardening solutions. Share your yeast feeding results in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your pepper transformations and any modifications you've discovered along the way. Don't forget to share this video with fellow gardeners who could benefit from this game-changing technique. Together, we're building a community of smarter, more successful gardeners, one breakthrough at a time.